If you want to pick up bits of fluff from the floor, the machine you use isn't a vacuum cleaner, it's a hoover. If you want to write something, you don't use a cheap plastic disposable ballpoint, you use a biro. And if you want to move stuff around, you don't just get a van, you get a transit. The Ford Transit is one of the great motoring icons. Over five million have been sold worldwide. And today, even though it's 40 years old, the recipe has hardly changed. There's good reason for transit becoming the synonym for van. We may take it for granted, but it's one of the great originals. In the early 60s, Britain was changing. Motorways meant that people could travel further and faster. But there was a problem, because vans were hopeless. Ford's best shot was the Thames. It was small, it was slow, and it couldn't have handled much worse if you'd driven it on the actual Thames itself. And if you had a crash, the only crumple zone was your face. The only way was up, so Ford pulled in engineers with proper van drivers' names like Charlie Baldwin and Fred Ray, not the sort of blokes who cried at films. The first thing the Charlies and the Freds did was make the Transit the best at carrying things. So this floor has been specifically designed to take sheets of 8 before, and builders only think in 8 before. Show builders Westminster Abbey and they'll think, a lot of 8 before went into that. And it worked. It was the van for all people. It helped small transport firms break the monopoly of the corrupt haulage business. It ferried young rock stars from gig to sweaty gig. The transit has always been a bit of a Swiss army knife. But if you buy a new one today, how many combinations of length, trim, colour, engine, doors, shape do you think there are? Thousand? Ten thousand? Nope. Thirteen million. And the Transit had another ace of its sleeve. It drove like a car. It had car engines, car suspension, car steering. In fact, it could hit 90 miles an hour, faster than the best-selling cars of the time. Its combination of speed and load space was loved by villains. In the 70s, the police reckoned that 95% of robberies involved the Transit. So, how to celebrate this remarkable birthday? Well, we did think about a cake, but I reckon nothing says many happy returns better than rubbing Jeremy's face in it. Which is why we've come once again to Germany and the Nürburgring, the fearsome 13-mile track with 147 corners that over the years has claimed hundreds of lives. Last year, Jeremy was set the challenge of taking a diesel Jaguar around this fearsome widow-maker in less than ten minutes. And he did it, just, with a time of nine minutes, fifty-nine seconds. As you can see, he was pretty pleased with the result. I did it! I did it! A 9.59! Unfortunately, it didn't cut much ice with his instructor, Sabine Schmitz. Sabine is the queen of the ring, a professional racing driver who knows this place better than any other living person. Nine minutes, 59 seconds. When she heard Jeremy's time, she threw down an unbelievable gaunt. Nine, 59 is under 10 minutes. I tell you something, I what? do that lap time in a van. Yep, she reckons she can get around the world's most demanding racetrack in under 9 minutes 59 seconds in a diesel-powered commercial vehicle. Well, what else could we do but pick up the challenge? This really hasn't been built for this sort of thing. We do no, appreciate that. No. <laughs> no, really not. It's really not easy with a, that heavy car, and the center of gravity is quite high here, and it's like a school bus, maybe. But under 10 minutes, some people struggle to get around there in a Porsche in that time. This is a van. Well, they are slow, but I'm fast. 